Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome to the first episode of my mini Japanese kitchen. It might seem a little strange for me to be making a cooking video, but for me this is a great way to hold myself accountable because otherwise I'll just go to McDonald's or go get udon every single day. So this is going to be a really good way for me to force myself to cook a little bit more and to make sure it's nutritious. We're going to start easy today with just some basic Japanese curry. This is one of my favorite dishes to make when I'm in a rush. I don't want to think and I just want to go to the grocery and get what's available. Some of these steps I will speed through and just voice over because it can get a little bit boring just watching someone boil carrots. So I'll have all the directions and ingredients down below for you to look at so that you can understand what's going on and do it yourself. First things first, let's go over the ingredients we're going to need. I have curry meat here. So this is actually pork. Um, it's cut up for curry. I bought it a few weeks ago on sale. As you can see, 205 yen. Um, it's been frozen and it's going to still be very good. If you want to use tofu, then you would add that later on as we're preparing vegetables. So this we're going to do first, but if you had tofu, you'd do it after the vegetables. Um, I've got Japanese mushrooms, onion, carrot, potato. Now you can use any kind of vegetable you want. I've done this before with lotus root. You can add green vegetables if you want, whatever you want. We of course have the very important curry mix. Now this is going to be a block curry. I'll show you later on. And you just kind of melt it into your stew that you're going to make. And then I also have pre-cooked rice. My rice cooker has nowhere to plug into my kitchen. So I just get these pre-cooked blocks that you microwave. It's pretty cost effective and also saves me a lot of time and prep work because I don't have to clean a rice cooker. So I'll just set that over here for later. Now it's time to prepare the vegetables. With the potato and carrot, I'm going to boil those in the microwave with some water. That way they're nice and soft once I add them to our curry. So we'll just go ahead and peel and chop those and put them in a bowl. Okay, once we got those chopped, add some water and we're going to add them into the microwave. It took me around five to seven minutes for these to cook. Then it's time to deal with the onions. Now I'm only using half of it because I'm making a small amount for myself and the other half I'm going to keep for later. Um, make sure you peel it and then chop it into small pieces. Now the easiest way to do this is to make two vertical cuts almost toward the end, as you can see, and then we're going to make vertical slices almost to the end as well. This is going to make it really easy to dice up and have small pieces without needing a processor. Make sure to check your potatoes and carrots so they don't overcook. Okay, now we're ready to cook, so put on a medium heat and then add whatever oil you're using. Today I'm using butter and go ahead and spread that around the pan to make sure you coat everything. Once it's evenly coated, it's time to add in our meat and go ahead and let that start to cook. Now about the curry we're using, it's a block form and it comes in these little packages and you can cut out however much you want to use. So if you need more, you can always chop off extra. Now in with the onions, and we're going to make sure to move everything around so that it doesn't burn. And don't be afraid to add more oil or butter if you need extra. In with our mushrooms, and then it's time to get out the potatoes and carrots from the microwave. go ahead and drain off most of the liquid from these potatoes and carrots, but you can use that in your curry if you want to. Sometimes it'll help the curry block to melt a little bit easier. Now the amount of curry that you use is up to you. If you want more sauce, go ahead and add extra, or if, like me, you want it to be more of a smooth flavor, but less saucy, then just go ahead and add a small amount. You can always add an extra if you want. This is a close-up of what's going on right now. We're gonna be blending this in and melting that curry paste into our stew. 
And once it's nicely blended, you're going to want to let it simmer and get those flavors going. While that's simmering, I'm going to go ahead and get my rice microwaved. These rice packages only take a minute or two to heat up, so it's a great option if you're strapped for time. Once it's been simmering for about a few minutes, go ahead and add it to your rice and you're good to go. There you have it, we have Japanese curry. So this is my version of it. It's a little bit lighter on the amount of sauce. Usually at a curry shop here, you're gonna get more of the sauce, less of the meat, but because I'm American, I like to have some very chunky meat and veggies in my things. So right, let's go ahead and try it, see how it turned out. Get some vegetables, some meat and rice. All right, itakimasu. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you guys have made this before or if there's something you want me to make next time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and eat this, so I'll see you guys later. Ciao,